Welcome back to the Mountain Morning Show. If you've watched the program much, you know that uh, we're a big fan of the group She Rose, and I am thrilled to have the regional, uh, the, uh, regional chair of the human trafficking pillar of She Rose here on, pro on the program. Her name is Dana Briggs. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Great Jeff. to have you here. Uh, not only are you doing that, but you're also an author. You're working on a new book. Mm -hmm. I I'm excited. This is, uh, we've got a lot to talk about. But let's start uh, with She Rose for a moment because sure. this is an empowering organization, one that I know is, uh, you know, of course, uh, probably been a thrust behind a lot of the things you were doing. Mm -hmm. So first of all, tell us about She Rose and your part, your role in that. Okay, I joined um, She Rose about two years ago, and we were in the awareness phase of doing um, the dances called One Billion Rising to help people d to recognize that human trafficking, domestic violence, and women in the military suffer through a lot of abuses. Indeed. And uh, as the regional uh, chair for human trafficking pillar mm -hmm. of that, uh, this is, uh, I think people are, might be surprised to know that human trafficking is uh, m a much bigger problem than we probably are, are often aware of, but we don't hear about it nearly enough. Talk about that. Okay, um, human trafficking is more lucrative than drug trafficking today. Wow. So around the globe, um, because you can sell a woman all day and not... Uh, but not um, drugs are one-time use. Yeah, yeah, drugs are one-time use. Wow! And so it just keeps getting worse and worse. But the awareness and the um, media coverage and the t people talking about it and writing about it is helping other people, you know, that are more naive to it, to realize that this is a true um, deficit in our society. Yeah. So that we cannot allow it to continue to keep growing. I mean, there's t too many lives are damaged, too many murders, too much PTSD, and um, just a loss of identity. Right. We've started to identify it in the way that it needed to be identified, which is essentially slave labor. Yes. It is no different. And when we look at slave labor, uh, as a whole, and this is including human trafficking, this is including, of course, people who are uh, required to work without, without having their passport, can't leave, or are living on the work site. We start to include all of these things. Uh, it is uh, a bigger industry than it ever was. In fact, there's more people in slavery now than in the history of this world. Right. That's uh, substantial, and when you think of it from this perspective, especially uh, women uh, that are held captive, it's, it's disheartening, it's troubling, and it doesn't seem like we're making a lot of headway, are we? It's slow, but um, we are making some headway. Um, uh, Dr. Phil's show on March 21st had a woman that was trafficked from birth. Mm -hmm. And so that, um, she, she escaped. And so, but her life has been devastated. Right. And so now, she, but now she has an opportunity to learn something different. And so um, human trafficking is going to change our entire lifestyle if we don't start recognizing it. Yeah. And there was a story of a, a mom in her front yard with a toddler and a two-year-old against the fence, and she heard a voice say, would you like some candy? And, there, and she oh. turned around saw a man trying to reach over the fence yeah, and pull the girl just by a the arm. Yeah, days ago, yeah. Yeah, and, and, and um, the mother was fast enough, she saved her daughter. You know, so... But um, that would, who knows what would have happened. And it exactly. could have been so, so uh, traumatic, clearly. Well, clearly it was. So Shiro's um, role right now is prevention. Yeah. So we're going to be doing like training the trainer, trainings for um, members that are, you know, leaders in Shiro's and are interested in doing that so that we can go into prisons where people who have been human trafficked or even domestic violence and um, be able to talk to them and help them see how they can make changes in their life that would be for good for them. Now, you're a healing arts uh, practitioner, a yes. uh, licensed massage therapist as well. Uh, you know, healing people is part of what you do. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about that with respect to the fact that, you know, with all this other uh, work that you're doing, you're also working on a book. Yes. Talk about that for a moment. Um, in the healing aspect yeah. of it, uh, I usually do one-on-one -on -one private 
and um, uh, I work with women and what I do is uh, energy healing mostly and so it helps to change uh, your thinking patterns on a cellular level and to um, help them realize what's possible in their life. And so that requires sometimes uh, shamanic practices, um, sound therapy, mm -hmm. and um, energy work. We use smudging for clearing. Right. And um, a lot of love and compassion and understanding. And so that, uh, that's very re rewarding for me. And also, um, it's, it's uh, so wonderful to see them start changing over time. Yeah. And so that's been very satisfying in, in the last 12 years of, of doing this kind of work. It's, it's inspired you to start writing, and you've been yes. writing under a pen name, Crystal Waters, is that right? Yes. Um, is I not supposed to say that? No, no, just, it's totally fine. Uh, throw it out there. <laughs> it's totally fine. Um, just have to be really careful with publishers. They don't like you to tell the story too much. Yeah. However, um, it's, it's my personal story, nonfiction. And uh, about my life, um, with a, a, a vast amount of abuse throughout my life, from the early age of three and a half, and on into my adult years, and from various people that I knew. And that's what really happens most of the time, yeah. is that when um, you have a lot of abuse, it's people that know you that are creating the abuse. Right. And so because of that, because of some of the abuses that I had were so horrific, um, I had uh, multiple personalities. Now they have labeled that dissociative identity disorder. Right. I've dropped disorder because that sounds like you're broken forever. And you're never yeah. going to be able to be okay. Right. And so. And it sort of places. It seems like it sort of almost places blame too, which. Yes. Uh, on you, which as the victim, that shouldn't happen. That's just right. more victimization. Right. Um, when you look at your future, what do you see now? I mean, that's, I think that's the hardest question, isn't it, for someone who's come through traumatic abuse? Um, you know what, I'm very hopeful, and I find my life very satisfying, because I'm involved with an organization like Shiro's, where you can make a difference in people's right. lives. Um, my work for the past 12 years has been making a difference for people's lives, and it gives them hope and um, strength and the power to be able to overcome, it, it, it's not fast, usually, yeah. for most people. It's a slow process, but as long as they have the support from friends and um, uh, professionals, then they can overcome it. My daughter asked me if I was going to say, Mom, are you going to say, and they're like a phoenix rising from the ashes, because that's True. exactly what it is. Right. You know, and they soar above the clouds, above the eagle, and into a realm where they can change and be a, the person that they were born to be. Wow. If people want to get uh, some more insight from you, some more help from you mm -hmm. uh, individually, how do they do that? I'm on Facebook, Dana Briggs. Okay. Okay, and um, I make it pretty simple so they can private message me. Uh, I also encourage people, especially women who are interested in helping in these areas, yep. to look up SheRoseUnited.org. It's a huge organization growing mm -hmm. massively. Uh, it's, it's just uh, tremendous to see women coming together in this way. Right. So that continues, mm -hmm. and the work continues with you. Dana thank Briggs, you thank you, you so it's very much pleasure. for being here. Absolutely. Uh, you know, it's a moment uh, in, you know, you might think of it as a moment of abuse and think that that's the end, but the truth is it's a lifetime of pain from that abuse, and to rise above it, well, that takes some serious effort, and it takes a lot of people, and that is what Shiro's is all about. So you, of course, can join them, find them online as well. We've got a lot more coming up here on the Mountain Morning Show. We'll take a break, and we'll be right back.